This is the next Bite of Life podcast, the place to be to hear personal stories from expats, digital nomads, and everybody else taking their next bite of life. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Next Bite of Life podcast. Today, I've got two people I am so curious to learn so much about. They're Amelia and JP, and their blog is called liveabroadnow.com. Say hello to everyone, Amelia and JP. Hola. Hola. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I know you guys live an unconventional life, and you're trying to, like, show people how it is so they can get inspired. Now, where are you currently? We live in Olón, Ecuador, and that is on the coast. Yeah, a small rural beach town. Oh, nice. Now, the one question I have for you, how long have you been there? Well, we've been in Ecuador almost three years. It'll be th- it's three years this month, but we've been here on the coast since February. Oh, congratulations. Three months is a long time. <laughs> three years. <laughs> I know. Three, oh, three years is a long time. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Now, I know before you moved to Olan, you were in Cuenca, right? Correct. Yes. How was that? Oh, Cuenca is a beautiful, beautiful city. And we loved it, but the altitude was a little tough on poor JP. (laughs) Yeah, I couldn't (laughs) handle uh, the high elevation. And Cuenca is at 8,400 feet. And it just, uh, and Amelia couldn't handle the the cool, cloudy weather. (laughs) Yeah. Ah. Cloudy here now, but it's not cold. Yeah, it's still warm. It's in the in the 70s every day. This is the winter season. And still, it's still warm, although it is cloudy a lot. Oh, good. That makes quite a big difference. I know as I get older, I'm like, ah, arthritis is coming. So yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be anywhere where it's cold. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Quang is great, though. It's a really, it's a wonderful city. It's got a lot of culture. The architecture is amazing. It's walkable and people are friendly. Uh, and that's why they call it the Athens of Ecuador. But it's not oh. right for everyone, especially if you have altitude issues. And we didn't know we would have any altitude problems or JP would until we got there. Mm-hmm. It's We were both a bit surprised because we moved from Denver, which is known as the mile high city. So we thought it would be okay, but unfortunately, no. Wow. However, we wanted to live in other parts of Ecuador anyway, so mm-hmm. um, maybe it was a blessing in disguise by yeah. JP. Yeah, we really wanted to show, and our goal is to move around more, and the pandemic is kind of has put a pause on our moving <laughs> plans, but we definitely want to show more of Ecuador for our YouTube channel so that people can really see what it's like to live here and, and in different places because, you know, the altitude is not great for everyone. The, the beach and the sand is not great for everyone. So there's, there's so much to show of Ecuador and there's really something for yeah. everyone. Absolutely. I know when you mentioned the altitude, there's a blogger, an older blogger that I know, and we've been friends online for a few years. And he was planning on, you know, moving to Ecuador. That was it. Cuenca was going to be it. And then a few months ago, I saw him. It's like, I tried it. And ultimately, I just can't handle the altitude. I was like, oh, wow. He was mm-hmm. really shocked. You know? <laughs> and he moved back, you know. Yeah. So I think that's definitely something to keep in mind if you're going to be moving to Cuenca specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Quito is even higher. It's a thousand feet higher, about 9,400 feet. So it's, I mean, it's real. Wow. When you get out the low point in Quito, you feel it. Oh, yes. <laughs> no, I I visited Colorado once and I felt it. I'm like, oh, I don't know how. I just can't do it. So <laughs> I totally understand. <laughs> now, how did you guys find Ecuador? I know it's it's becoming a very popular place to retire, or at least at least people looking to retire. How did you guys discover Ecuador? Well, I was doing a lot of research after I had some major spine surgeries, and we realized that. Going forward, if I need any more, we couldn't afford the cost of healthcare in the United States. So mm-hmm. we decided that we wanted to move out of the country and go somewhere else and live an unconventional life somewhere yeah. different. And so we, I was just looking at a lot of different places and kind of narrowed it down to our top 10 list. And Ecuador just ended up winning out for a bunch of different reasons. Like it's on the dollar, so it makes it really easy for us to, we don't have to do conversion in our head. And yeah. Our dollars go a lot further here yes. than they did in the U.S. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, 
very expat friendly. It's they have direct flights back to the states. So when we need to go back for work or family, it's it's pretty easy to get there from here. About a four and a half hour flight. So there there was just a lot of reasons. What do you, what were your reasons, Amelia? Oh, well, all of those for sure. And the time zone, it's very similar time zone. So I still work for my same company uh, in Colorado. Okay. And I, you know, we had considered other parts of the world, but we couldn't do a six hour time change. That would be really tricky for yeah. my job. So the time zone was a big part of it. And just, I don't know, JP, it was just, it looked so beautiful when we were looking online and we did our exploratory trip. And once we got here, we just both instantly fell in love with the country and we didn't want to go home. Yeah. Wow. After our, our exploratory trip, we were here for 10 days and man, that was, that was the most depressing trip home I've ever had. <laughs> like, <laughs> you mean you were canning down the days? <laughs> it took a, a year for us to get back, wasn't it? No, it was about seven, eight months. Oh, it felt like a year. Yeah. Like <laughs> now... So, so when you left, it wasn't, you know, everybody asked me whenever I meet new people, did you live because of the politics? But that wasn't really the, the major factor. Yours was more for like healthcare. Yeah. The major reasons for us were cost of living and healthcare. That right. was, that was the major driving factor. We were just working all the time and not getting ahead. You know, uh-huh. we were, we weren't even making enough with both of us working to cover our cost of living in Denver. Uh So, So, you know, we just decided that we didn't want to spend the rest of our life in the rat race, or as actually, I I like to call it the hamster wheel because the race inflation. (laughs) That's that's what I call it too. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. A a hamster wheel, you just run around and around in circles and you never get anywhere. Exactly. (laughs) Yes. Well, and we didn't want to, we didn't want to wait to have our, to experience other cultures. JP and I both had the dream of living in another country. And after he had his surgeries, it was really a wake up call. Yes. You know, life is short. Yes. Yeah. You got to go for it. A lot of people spend their whole life working and, you know, working toward retirement. And we realized after my health issues that retirement is not a guarantee. No, it's not. (laughs) Not, not just whether or not you'll ever be able to afford to retire, but just whether you live that long. And I, we just, we were really concerned that, you know, if we wait, it may never come. Right. Yeah. Right. It's very true. Very true. I mean, those are some of the reasons that we left as well. Now talk to me about the healthcare there. How, how has it been? The healthcare that we got in Cuenca is, is just like you would get in the U.S. Actually, it's, I would say it's a little better in terms of service goes because we can see our doctors within a day or two. And when Uh I, um, because of my spine, I wanted to make sure I had a neurosurgeon here in case something happens. I didn't want to have to be scrambling, you know, during the crisis to find a neurosurgeon. So I talked to our general practitioner and he referred me out to an English speaking neurosurgeon. And while I was sitting in my general practitioner's office, he's like, oh, let me just call up this, uh, this guy. So he called him on his mobile phone and they talked for a minute in Spanish. And then he's like, so do you want to go see it? When do you want your appointment? I said, I don't know. <laughs> when is he available? And my doctor said, uh, can you see him at four? And I said, it's three yeah. thirty. Yeah. Can you believe <laughs> Like sounds great to me. I, know. I, I told him, I said, you know, I'm fine waiting till tomorrow. <laughs> and we were so shocked that it was not only were the doctors in communication that closely, but that they're readily available. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. And yeah. They all it's work, such a difference. Yeah, yes. and they all work together. My physical therapist, my general doctor, and my neurosurgeon, all three work together. They all WhatsApped each other about me and communicated about my, you know, about my progress because I was still recovering when we moved here. And so they, uh-huh. it was just shocking to me that they all work together, like communicate directly <laughs> with each other. That, that never happened in the U.S. And then, exactly. And the last time I saw my neurosurgeon in the States before we moved, it took me three months to get the appointment. And then we got wow. there and they were running three hours late. And I had to wait because I couldn't wait another three months to see him because we were leaving. So we just wow. had to sit there and wait. And then we didn't actually get to see the neurosurgeon. We saw the physician's assistant and the bill was $250 for that. Oh my we God. 15 minutes with her and got x-rays. And then, you know, here, my neurosurgeon costs $35 to 
for, for and he spent 45 <laughs> minutes with me and it was him not his physician's assistant uh, yeah it's an incredible a difference huge, yeah huge difference it's yeah, such a all, sad situation i know we get a lot of comments on our youtube videos about how great healthcare is in the states and they can't believe that we would trust our health with <laughs> you know, people in other countries and it's just we're just so delusional we've I don't know how that happened. Right. We have no clue. My brother had surgery in India and he had a surgeon that had gone to school in England. And this guy was on the phone consulting with people from different countries. And I mean, he's just like, bam, bam, bam. Like he carried yeah. the post, wow. post on him. And he had the surgery four years ago, even till today. Every year he calls him up to see how he's going, wow. you know, how everything is going. And my brother's back in Nigeria and he's like, I may need to see you. So he'll go there like every year or every other year to see him. But he still calls him up just to chat and see how he's doing. I'm like, where would that ever happen? Yeah, not in the US. Plus it costs like, you know, it costs like one tenth of the <laughs> of the amount. That they would exactly. Have. Yeah. And not only is the quality of care so much better, but it's so more so much more affordable. Yes. It's yes. amazing. That was really eye opening for us. Yeah. That's so good to hear. Now the the cost of living you said was also obviously cheaper. What is yes. like a monthly yeah. like for you to the, there's two of you and there's two dogs. What would you say would be the average cost of living, you know, per month, like monthly expense there? Have you ever thought it out and can you share when some? We were in Cuenca, yeah, when we were in Cuenca, we spent about $2,000 a month. And here on the coast, we're spending about $1,700 a month. Okay. So it's a little bit cheaper here just because there, we don't have as many things to do. So we don't spend as much money on activities and things that we did in, the, in Cuenca. But the cost of living is about one third here compared to what we were spending in Denver. That's great. So you guys are not out clubbing or anything like that, right? No, I mean, I saw from, from your uh, videos, you could tell like, you know, I saw the, the video of where you showed the house that you're living in now. It's so nice. How much did that cost? Like on a, on a monthly so basis. Our is, yeah, our rent is seven hundred a month for it's a three bedroom, two bathroom condo with a backyard, and it, we're about three blocks from the beach, the beautiful Pacific Ocean. Nice. And that also includes the internet. Wow. And it's fully furnished. And it's fully furnished, so we didn't, you know, we didn't have to provide any furniture, or linens, or anything. Although we had some of our own, but um, yeah. It's a, and we have it also includes the tap water and a lawn guy. Who takes care of the yard? Wow! And what else does that include? We have to pay the electricity, and and things run on propane gas here. So the our gas cooktop and our dryer and the hot water all use propane tanks that get delivered. But those cost what is it? Two bucks? It's two dollars. Two tank. two dollars a tank. What? Yeah, and we've had seriously. Yeah. And I thought we pay eleven euros for a tank of. Uh, Yes, and I thought that was really cheap. Yeah, it's two dollars. Two is amazing. Had three tanks in the six, seven months that we've yeah. been here. Six months, we've only replaced the it, the tanks twice. So two tanks are four dollars yeah. in six months. And the electricity is not expensive either. It depends on how much we run the ele- the uh, air conditioner in our bedroom. Each room has its own AC gotcha. unit. So it's been averaging around gotcha. what seventy dollars, I think. Yeah, seventy a month. That's not bad at all when you run the AC. No, it's not. That's great, and obviously the internet speed is good because if you're still using it for work. Oh, the internet's amazing here! I can't believe how good it is. It's so much better than what we had in Colorado at about what half the price. A third of the price. Of, <laughs> well, yeah, it really does work out that everything is about a third. Yeah, but, yeah. So in Colorado, we had a, a cable service with Comcast and. At seven o'clock at night, it would just die when everybody in our apartment <laughs> building went on it. You know, we paid one hundred and twenty dollars a month for that, and here we pay forty-five dollars a month, and it's about three times faster. So we have a, we have one third the cost for three times the speed. Wow, it's so reliable. 
I know that's the one thing everybody always says, like, oh, you're not going to have internet. And I'm like, you know, all these little countries, like we lived in Malta before we moved to Spain and the internet was insanely fast. I'm like, it's really? not, yeah, because they're really like into online gambling. It's like the online gambling capital of the world. I mean, it's just yeah. super fast. Who knew? So, yeah. Yeah, I bet they really wired. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's been really amazing finding it about how how things are everywhere else. Now I know you guys are vegetarians. Is it easy to find you know things to eat? And do you have any problems finding food? No, actually, the quality of the fruits and vegetables here are incredible. Everything has so much more flavor, and it's just bountiful wow. mm -hmm. and so affordable we spent i just posted a picture on our instagram page of all the vegetables we bought the other day it was eleven dollars and 75 cents and basically covered our counter <laughs> and three dollars of that were a uh, dragon fruit which are still pretty expensive here they're 75 cents each in the states dragon fruits are usually like three to five dollars each wow but here we, we eat them all the time it's one of my favorite fruits but yeah, we had, I mean, it's the whole counter was full and somebody posted that they just went and bought a similar amount of produce in the States and it was $98. <laughs> and it comes in one bag. That's <laughs> yeah. right, a lot right, of exactly. for shopping, you come back with like six, seven bags for like 27 euros. And then you look at what we used to get in the States. I'm like, I would go out to HEB and like $40, 40 later, I have one simple bag. And then I'm like, what's for lunch? There's nothing in here that we can eat. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Unbelievable. It's like, how does that happen? <laughs> I don't miss it at all. I'm sorry. And anybody who's listening to this and you still think, you know, the U.S. is still the best place to live because it's so freaking cheap. Well, you have no idea. I mean, as you can hear from two different countries, they're telling you it's cheaper. So it's time for you to think about your unconventional lives and try and make a, if you're thinking about it, make a break for it. Life is short. Definitely. It is <laughs> Absolutely. Short. Absolutely. And you know, it's easy for us to eat out here too, because this is a very, it, we're shocked. We're actually vegan and in this little community, there's so many vegan options. Mm -hmm. We could eat wow. out every day. Wow. Yeah, Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Some place different. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> now that's shocking and to me. Cuenca. Yeah. yeah. Cuenca is the same way. And Cuenca, is, I would say that it's more along the lines of uh, gourmet, vegan, and vegetarian. Okay. Where here, it's it's not as gourmet, yeah. but we have just, it's just, the food is just as good. And it's just as much, especially for a small, we, the, the community where we live only has 2,500 people. Mm. So it's a really small yeah. town. Yeah. And we have all these restaurants. It's just amazing. Wow. Yeah, we're pretty spoiled. That's great. Very, no, that's really good to hear because I just thought like maybe there was one, maybe like a token vegan restaurant or something. <laughs> like you have to eat there every day and they know your name, kind of like <laughs> there. <laughs> it's like, okay, Amelia's here. Let's give her that green salad. And then, you know, oh, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Oh, that's really good to hear. That's really good to hear. Now, is there anything that you miss about Cuenca as opposed to like being in alone, like fewer people? What do you miss most about Cuenca itself? I would say we miss our friends, um, but that's a tough one. Yeah. Yeah, I miss the like just the architecture yeah. and the, the city vibe. Yeah. Because you know, I grew up in a small town in Kansas, a small farm town outside Kansas City, Kansas or Kansas City, yeah, Kansas. And I don't know, I just I enjoyed the city life after spending my first eighteen years in a small town. <laughs> I really enjoyed the city, so I'm. It's a little bit of a return, a, re, a return to the small town life for me. It's not oh, wow, exactly. Wow, you sound like Mr. Douglas from Green Acres. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. And for me, it's, I've never lived in a place like this before where I've never lived in a small community. So I'm enjoying it because it's a whole new experience for me. Not to mention, I speak a lot more Spanish here, which I really appreciate because I need to continue to practice and improve. Yeah. Amelia is from Chicago. So this is, she's like Zsa Zsa Gabor. Oh, yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> Which I'm enjoying the change. <laughs> okay. But I do miss the architecture and some of the conveniences of Cuenca. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the tough thing about where we are. If we need to go to a major grocery store or to the doctor, it's for something other than like a cut. Um, we need to go to La Libertad, which is about an hour drive, which isn't terrible. But we were spoiled in Cuenca because it was just a 20-minute walk. walk. Uh, <laughs> so is there Uber there? Do you have to take a cab like for that hour or do you have to take a bus? Yeah, we have uh, we have a bank of private drivers, generally cab drivers, who I have on my WhatsApp. And I just message them and ask if they can drive us. And it takes it costs about thirty dollars to go, or twenty five to thirty to go to La Libertad and back, and to into Guayaquil from here, it's about eighty dollars to drive us there. So you know it's not great. And Uber, there is Uber in Quito and Guayaquil, but that's I think those are the only two cities that have Uber right now. So pretty much you're you're using cabs in this country, cabs or buses. Yeah. And the buses are running again. We ca- we got out of the habit of taking them because they weren't running. Yeah. Uh, well, we weren't going anywhere when we were under quarantine. Oh yeah. I remember so you were saying that. Uh-huh. But yeah, it was a pretty strict quarantine. Um, so they haven't started the interprovincial buses from Olón to Guayaquil yet, and, but once that happens, that's a, certainly a much more affordable option. Because mm-hmm. what did you say, JP? It's it was seven dollars. Like seven dollars to go from Olón into Guayaquil on the on one of the buses. The public interprovincial buses are like four bucks, four or five dollars. But we like to take a, a bus that goes direct, yeah. and it's only seven dollars, and it's really comfortable. It is a nice bus. Makes more sense. Now, another thing that most people think of when they think of uh, places like Ecuador uh, is safety. Now, can you tell us a little bit more about that? How do you feel safe there? Oh, we feel very safe here. Very safe, especially in this little area because we know everybody Mm -hmm. and everyone kind of watches out for everyone else. But we felt very safe in Cuenca, too. It's really petty crime is the major crime here. So petty theft, petty theft that's which is I mean. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pick, pickpocketing and, and theft basically are the main crimes. They don't have a lot of violent crime and most of it is domestic in nature. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, we feel very safe overall yeah. and we actually feel quite a bit safer here than we did in Denver. We lived in downtown Denver and there were times when we were walking home from dinner or, or to the grocery store on Sunday morning. Yeah. And we just didn't feel safe. We were, you know, it's just not, it, we didn't feel safe. Wow. Yeah. And here we've never, I've never felt that way here. No, I've never I felt either. like, oh my God, I, are we walking into a dangerous situation? I've never felt that way here. Now, is it like Spain where nobody has guns? I mean, like the citizens are allowed very, to have very, guns, right? Yeah, they have very strict gun laws. You can own guns here, but you have to go through a very strict and um, lengthy approval process. So you have to get a license and there's a lot to it. You just don't, it's not a three-day approval. It's It can take months to get a gun license and you have to have a good reason for having one. Yeah, it's not just because you want to. Exactly. Yeah, so it's, you know, I know that doesn't appeal to a lot of people. I don't know. I'm, we try to steer clear of that debate because yeah. we don't, I'm, we're not gun people. I don't like guns, but I don't, you know, we just don't even think about it that much. <laughs> it's just no, not it's part just, of the culture. Yeah. Just probably, I imagine Spain's the same way. It's exactly. just not part of. No, culture, it's not part of that culture at all. Yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. I, I was telling somebody, you know, because Fe- Federico is always like, if you're going out late with your girlfriends, make sure you take a cab home. And I'm just like, it's midnight. The buses are not running. I'm like, ah, it's only a couple of miles. I'll walk. And I get home. He's like, he's more worried than I am. But it just feels so good to not worry that here I am at midnight walking home and nobody, no, nobody even looks at you. They don't care. Everybody's just doing their thing. And it's so, right, exactly. it's amazing. And it, yeah. it is something I wish would happen in the U.S., but at this point, it, it's not. But it's nice to know that it's not just Spain or whatever, that, you know, places like Cuenca, where people think it's, oh, my God, no, it's a third world country. You know, we cannot go there. Right. They think all those things. And, you know, I guess it's what we're exposed to watching television, like in the States. It's not like they show what's happening anywhere else, unless it's bad. 
Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, we talk about that a lot when we watch television shows because now we can really spot all the negative stereotypes. Uh -huh. Any anytime they mention uh, South America or Latin America in general, it's always really negative. Like in, basically implying that it's a third, you know, third world country. And we all have dirt floors, no plumbing. Yeah. It's crime. You know, you walk outside your door and you're going to get shot. Yeah. And it's just, it's just ridiculous that it's so obvious now to us when yes. we're watching. And it can be a sitcom, like a funny te television show or a drama. It really doesn't matter what it is. We're just fed this thing from childhood yeah. that every place else is dangerous and uninhabitable unless right. you're, you want to take your life into your own hands. And it's just really untrue. And I, Yeah, we had people ask, worry that we were going to become drug mules. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. I can see that. <laughs> oh, my God. I can totally see that. <laughs> <They're funny. laughs> yeah, these are normal people living their lives just like everybody else. Exactly. Yeah, where we live now, everybody knows everybody. Yeah. I mean, we know all of our neighbors. We yeah. say hola or buenos dias to everybody. And I mean, we know all the neighborhood dogs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's I a really it's a tight knit community. Yeah. I mean, you walk your dogs and you're bound to like run into out. people yeah. and, you know, you say hello and you, you start recognizing everything. And of course, yeah, it helps with the safety. Now, do you, do you ever like when you when you go out, do you yeah. take like Spanish lessons? Do you try and improve your Spanish by talking to people? <laughs> 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 yeah. The, yes. Our Spanish is a work in progress. We're, we're not I'm fluent fine. yet, but we're trying. It's a little painful. I am actually taking lessons um, online with my our teacher we had in Cuenca. Um, I don't know if there's any in-person classes yet. I think the Montanita Spanish School is back and running, right. but I'm not sure it's in, in person or if they're still online yeah. as well. Ecuador is slowly but surely reopening from the quarantine, all the restrictions. But anyway, we do. We a lot of people here don't speak English, and when we go to Guayaquil, we a lot of people don't speak English, so we are forced to speak Spanish, which is a very good thing mm -hmm. uh, because we we are continuing to improve. Like JP says, it's a work in progress. I always say, the more yeah. we learn, the more we realize we have to learn. <laughs> but it's good. I feel the same way. It's very hard, and everybody says, "Oh, you can pick it up. Spanish is easy to pick up." I'm like, maybe when you're ten. <laughs> but <laughs> my grace are like. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's tricky when you're older. And there's so yes. many nuances. Everybody has yeah. different accents and mm -hmm. different slang. And Yeah, if I could go back in time, the one thing I would do is go hit whoever whoever decided to assign gender yeah. to <laughs> nouns. I would just hit them over the head and try to agree not to do that. It's so true. Because I don't care. My, my computer is neither male nor female, neither is the water, the stove. It doesn't need to have a gender. <laughs> oh my God, it's so true. It is so true. And I'm like, L this. And it's like, no, it's la. I'm like, ah. <laughs> yeah, but how do you even do? I, I know, I know. I know. And then they, people love to correct us. So oh, if yeah. I try to do anything in Spanish, then that's all I get. I get a dozen comments about how I use la instead of L or vice versa. Like, if you want me to keep practicing, then don't exactly. correct every single mistake. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying oh my god it's it's so true i'm so glad to hear that because sometimes you think it's just you it's only you but it's not i think everybody's having the same problem <laughs> but we'll get through it and we'll be fluent one of these days so yes we will yes we just have to persevere and just i just feel like one day it's just all gonna click and yeah. we're all just gonna start rattling off our spanish I guess, what do they say, JP, when you start dreaming in Spanish, you know you're there? Yeah. I don't know. I dream in Spanish now, but I can't understand myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I've been finding lately, though, is like when I hear English like on television, my mind automatically 
tries to translate into Spanish. Like it's not even wow. like I'm trying. It's just doing it by itself. And then I go check like Google Translate to see if I was right. And I'm like, oh my God, yay. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. That's but I don't Congrats. know when it happened. Like it didn't happen while I was in class, you know, but I think somewhere in between when the quarantine started and our classes had to stop. And then I started watching YouTube and I was watching everything in Spanish. Somewhere it's starting to click. And I just don't know why or how, but I'm not questioning it. (laughs) (laughs) Just go with it. That's right. I think it definitely helps hearing more Spanish because it kind of permeates your subconscious. Mm -hmm. That's true. And we live also, you know, we live in the city, but we live in a barrio that's only locals. Like you barely hear any English. So I'm forced to speak it unless I go downtown where all the tourists are and then it's all English. And I'm like, I don't want that. You know, we purposely Mm -hmm. chose to live like on the rim so we can interact with more people. Yeah. In Cuenca, it was really, really easy to speak English because it's the city with the largest number of bilingual Spanish, native Spanish speakers. So, so many people speak Spanish and English there that it's really easy to just be an English speaker. And here in, we're in our little small town, very few people speak it. So it's, we're definitely learning more here. Yeah. Well, that's great. That's fantastic. It so is. your advice would be for somebody who's thinking about moving to a, a Ecuador to like start learning Spanish, right? Definitely. Yeah, the sooner the yeah. better. It certainly enhances yeah. your experience. Mm-hmm. Yes, it does. Yes, it absolutely does. I agree with that because I don't have to drag my husband everywhere now. Before, I would not go anywhere unless he was with me because I'm like, I don't know what they're saying. I don't, you know, but now I'm like, eh, I'll say my few words and if it's not right, they correct me and I go. But it, it, it makes you a little bit more confident when you start learning some words. Exactly. So it's definitely worth trying to learn it. Yeah. When JP and I first arrived, we thought we were prepared and we would be all right no we the two of us had to go out together to communicate because they speak language <laughs> you say the a part i say the b part yeah exactly so i would was better at interpreting and understanding and then jp was uh-huh. better at speaking so it would take uh-huh. the two of us to communicate with one person yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah that was okay yeah, but it worked but you did it and that's you know that's to be that's very commendable because you you actually try mm-hmm. Yes. And they appreciate that. You know, it's not like a lot of times I think like in the U.S., for instance, if you don't speak English, it's like, oh, go back to your country. Right. Learn to speak English. They, you know, in Ecuador and the same here in Spain, it's like, OK, this is how you say it. they correct you. They help you. They, do. they don't mock. You. I agree. Yeah, it's very nice. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's a very supportive yeah, culture here. Mm-hmm. It is. They're very warm yeah. and welcoming. Yes, that's fantastic. What do you guys miss most about the U.S.? Like if you had to say, okay, we're here now, we're loving life, but there's something that we really, really miss about the U.S. and wish we could have here. I would say the really, really the only thing we miss are some of the conveniences and it's not enough to ever send us packing. No. You know, we, yeah, um, yeah. we can't do a lot of things online here as far as, like shopping or paying bills, although that has improved thanks to the quarantine. So there's times when it's like, oh, I just wish I could just order this from Amazon and have it delivered to my door and I don't have to go in into town and mm-hmm. yeah. try to track down what I need. Yeah, deliveries aren't really a thing here. They don't have a national postal service, so there's no door-to-door deliveries. Oh. They don't even really have a national address system. So in the cities, you'll have addresses and street numbers, but like where we are, the we don't have an address. It's just basically the building inside this neighborhood, the first building inside this neighborhood. Yeah. And that's it. That's the address. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's no, there's, no way, there's no way to do deliveries, you yeah. know, even if they had a delivery system, because there's no way to do an address. And yeah. a lot of places are just cross streets. So the address is just a cross street, or it'll be like the yellow house across from the church. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. So you can't, and Amazon it says they ship here, but you know, for us, we would have to drive an hour to the sh- a shipping center uh, to pick up our package, yeah. assuming it ever actually makes it through customs uh, or, you know, and the expense is really high. The, the shipping rates are really high to get things here. And then you have to pay customs import fees and 
it's just not realistic. So I would say, yeah, probably the, the conveniences of getting things that we need. There's also, there's just not as much of a selection. So when you go to a store, especially with electronics mm-hmm. or like, uh, I don't know, like food, specialty food items Mm -hmm. or supplements. You can't just go find those easily and as you can in the States. So I would say that's probably the biggest thing, but it's definitely not enough to make us want to leave. Exactly. Just minor, then a minor thing, Mm -hmm. not like, oh my God. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear. Now I will, I will leave you with one final question. What would be, or what would be your advice to somebody listening to this and, you know, who's saying, you know what, I want to do what they're doing. Well, what would you say to someone who was like, I, I want to know, I want to do what Amelia and JP did. I want to move to Ecuador. What should I know? What is the biggest thing that I should do? That's I would say the question. biggest thing, if you want to, if you want to do what we're doing is you have to bring your money with you. Yes. That's probably the biggest obstacle for a lot of people is we both work online and we've both worked. I've worked online for 15 out of 25 years and Amelia has worked online for the past 10 years. So we came here with our income streams intact because the, if you're planning to come here and get a job, it's just not realistic unless you speak Spanish fluently. And then even then the wages are really low. We had somebody comment on one of our videos that, He's a, he graduated from the University of Cuenca with a computer science degree, and he's a programmer, and he only makes $5 an hour. So you're just yeah. not going to make, even if you can get a job, and the competition is extremely stiff, especially now with the pandemic and the economic fallout from that, is extremely stiff competition. And on top of that, the wages are really low. So you got it. The biggest thing is if you work in a job that you can't do online, we recommend people start training or learning a new skill set that will allow them to transition their incomes to where they can work from anywhere. And so that they're not reliant on uh, going to a physical location. Right. The nice thing is to actually move here. You don't need a lot of money. Mm -hmm. If you're especially if you don't need to hire a visa agent or a lawyer to help you your temporary visa costs $500. Mm-hmm. So you can move here relatively mm-hmm. inexpensively for probably just a couple thousand dollars if you're not bringing a bunch of stuff with you. But yeah, you have to be able to show that mm-hmm. you can pay your own way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the cost of living is really low. So a single person could easily live here on less than $1,000 a month. And we know uh, we know couples who live here on less than $1,000 a month. And so you don't need a lot of money. And that's the thing is a lot of people are like, how, how would I ever replace my $6,000 a month income? Well, you don't need to. You can f- figure out a way to make 1000 or 1500 a month and online. And that's yeah. doable. But you do have to prove that you have consistent yeah. income yeah, in and order and to get it. And it's 12 months, too. You have to show 12 months worth of bank statements okay. to show that you're making at least, I think it's $450 a month income. So that's all you have to do to qualify for a temporary visa. And there's a bunch of different types of visas, but the income requirement is a minimum of 450 a month for the past 12 months. And you basically just show in deposits into your bank. That's do- totally doable for a lot of people. And I'm so glad that you actually said that, like that's the money, because a lot of times I get people emailing saying they want to move. They've got, you know, 2,500 saved up. And I try and tell them gently, that's not going to be enough. You need to be able, and of course they don't speak any Spanish. I'm like, mm-hmm. the wages are really low. You need to be able to survive and work online. So that's your number one assignment, so to speak, you know? You need to be able to figure yeah. out how you're going to do it. Yeah. There's really no way around that. Mm-hmm. And there's a, we have a couple of videos about re- remote working and how to transition to an online income because it is kind of a crucial point, especially if you're not retired yet. So a lot of people, a lot of people move here on a retirement, you know, their social security or their pension from their company or the government or military or the you know police or fire, uh, fire people. What do you call them now? Fire. What's the politically yeah. correct term? Fire, fire person. Yeah. Retire early for financial independence, yes. Yeah, yeah. so if, you know. The lean fire, fat fire. <laughs> yeah, so if you have a pension or social security, then it's pretty easy to live here. A lot of a lot of people retire here because they can't live in the States on their retirement. Right. They don't, they didn't make enough money to cover the, the 
increasing cost of living there, especially with healthcare. So they move here and they live very comfortably on their retirement. But if you're not retirement age, and we encourage a lot of people who aren't retirement age to get out of the hamster wheel before it's too late. And if you're in that boat, then that, that's when you really need to think about how am I going to earn an income in order to live wherever I want to. Now, of course, for anybody listening to, to this podcast, I will have on the regular post that goes along with this podcast, I'll have JP and Amelia's um, information, their website, how to get in touch with them on Instagram or what have you, plus the links to, you said you had the post to... to um, yeah, how to segue into that life. So I'll put all that up on the on the blog post as well. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for this interview. This was really fun. And I, you know, I have a lot of information that I didn't have before. I kind of suspected it was similar, but I, I'm really amazed at the similarities between Cuenca and, uh, and Spain. So it was really nice to have it... Uh, I don't even know what the word is. Whatever. Like it's, <laughs> so thank you again for, for being on here. Once again, let us have the name of that, uh, that website that people can check out, as well as your YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is Amelia and JP, and our uh, website is liveabroadnow.com. So if you want to live abroad now, then <laughs> go on right over there and check it out. That's right. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, this was so much fun. Thank you so much. Well, thank, thank you for helping us. This was fun too. Thank you everyone for listening and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Ciao. Ciao.